What's up, everybody? This is your boy DC Black coming to you yet again with another video. So, uh, more D D23 news. Um, it, the train just keeps rolling, it doesn't stop. Uh, let me kind of get myself situated here. Uh, yes, like so, as you guys can see, the train doesn't stop, everything is continuing to move. Uh, we got this bit of news actually yesterday. Along with the Mandalorian, which I did a review of, you can go on our on the Safe Point channel and check that out. Uh, but I want to actually talk about this because uh, I want to talk about this, and I want to talk about Phase Four because this kind of it's kind of a mixed bag for me. Um, to be totally honest with you, this is kind of a mixed bag, and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, let me kind of move this there. Uh, kind of trying to fix some stuff just for a second there we go so this is a mixed bag for me um and i want to explain why um just a moment so it was announced that we got three new disney plus streaming uh disney plus marvel shows in the form of she hawk moon knight and ms marvel so if just in case you're uh you have no idea who these three characters are i want to kind of go in depth of them I don't know too much about Moon Knight. I want to kind of give you a little bit of what I know, but I want to kind of go from right to left. Uh, I'm actually going to start with the two women, female characters, and I'm going to go with Moon Knight. Uh, so Miss Marvel, Miss Marvel, and this is and she's more, and I think honestly she is going to be one one that's more interesting to see how they integrate her into the show, into the into the MCU, than any of these care any of these three shows. Just because of who she is. So, Miss Marvel, um, her moniker actually is the moniker of Captain Marvel, the of Captain Marvel, who we see in the MCU currently, played by Brie Larson. Uh, originally, she was called Miss Marvel, uh, but Captain America, through a series of events, got her wanted her to take on the moniker of Captain Marvel because um, it was time for her to step into that role. So, Miss Marvel, Kamala Khan, here, uh, who this show is going to be about, she, like, worshipped uh, Captain Marvel as her idol and wanted to take on Miss Marvel. Now, the moniker of Miss Marvel. Marvel. Now, um, the reason why I say this is going to be interesting is because she is an inhuman. Now, um, some of you guys may have seen that horrific, uh, mini series that came on ABC uh, called Inhumans. Some of you may have seen um, episodes of Agents of Shield. I think it was the I want to say the from the third or fourth season on they dealt with Inhumans. Um, third and fourth season, I believe, it's between three and five. Um, three and five, uh, the third season, and the fifth season. But anyway. They dealt with Inhumans. Uh, inhumans are humans that, uh, basically, Inhumans are humans that have had their genes messed with um, via the Kree, and they are they have uh, latent abilities. However, and it sounds a lot like uh, mutants, and I'm going to kind of get to the difference in a second, but when you integrate this Terrigen Mist um, to these people, uh, their power they get into this cocoon, and then they are and then they erupt out of this cocoon with their abilities. Some of them erupt being transformed physically. Some of and they look nothing like humans at all. Some of them are look human, just like Kamala Khan does, for instance, but they just have new abilities. A perfect example of that is her. She has a long. She has the ability of elongation. Um, actually, I'm going to read you her power set. Uh, let me see. I'm going to just read you her power set. So I'm not too familiar with her full power set, um, but I'm going to just read that to you, just so you can get a feel for her ability. So I'm not 100% familiar with her full power set. So we're just going to go ahead and get right into this. So 
Her power set includes the following. Uh, let me get this right. Um, so you can kind of think of her as like the... She has the same ability similar to uh, Mr. Fantastic. Her and Mr. Fantastic powers are very similar. Um, she has the ability to shape shift. Uh, she also has the ability. She also has she has shape shifting abilities. She can embiggen herself. That's what she technically calls it, um, where she kind of makes herself bigger than uh, make herself uh, kind of big. Um, trying to give you, I want to give you guys like a full listing of her power because I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I do not, I'm not familiar with her full power set. Um, but, uh, so her, uh, she has morphogenic abilities. She can morph her body into different things. Super strength, speed, durability, heal it. She has a healing uh, factor, uh, and she has bioluminescence, uh, which basically she can make herself glow. I didn't know she had that. Um, but yes. So what makes Kamala Khan so special, you may ask? What the reason why Kamala Khan is so special is because she is the first, she was the first back in 2014, she was the first Pakistani superhero. Um she was the first uh, uh, Muslim Pakistani um superhero. Excuse me, I had a little something in my mouth. She was the first uh, of that. She was the first. Also, she was the first uh, Muslim superhero from Marvel to get their own comic book. Uh, so, she was a big deal. Uh, she eventually joined the Avengers. Uh, she also, uh, she's uh, she's a leader of the young, they don't call them Young Avengers, Young Avengers anymore. They have another team called the Champions. And she is the leader of the champions. Now, um, I think this is very interesting. Like, I would say just far as representation in a good way. I, I look at the Miss Marvel show as being representation in a good way. I don't, like I said, I don't know too much about her. Because I'm going to be honest with you, I don't like the character. The character isn't for me. And that's okay. Um, uh, every comic book character isn't going to be for everybody. Uh, so you can just you can expect that you know you don't have to it doesn't mean necessarily that it is that uh the character is you know a sjw character um doesn't mean they kind of trying to push agenda but i mean every character is not for everybody and that's okay but what i am kind of concerned about is the fact that i hope they do her character justice where it's not like the, it's not racist. They're not kind of putting a stare. They're not trying to stereotype Miss Kamala Khan in any way because I feel like this would be a good way for them to break barriers. I feel like uh, DC could do this as well with their Green Lantern Muslim character. Uh, but I mean, but it would be kind of about. But they should probably do Hal Jordan. He should, he could probably be in the movie. But they should do Hal Jordan first. Um, but yeah, like I think this character, I think this would be this is interesting. Um, I'll get to why how this kind of fits into grand scheme of things a little bit later in the video. But I think like this Miss Marvel kind of has potential. Uh, it has the potential to be pretty good. I probably will check this out. But I guarantee you. Uh, the original plan, and it, which kind of screws up, which kind of sucks that this whole situation between Disney and Marvel kind of the way it is, because I guarantee you what was supposed to happen was they were supposed to introduce Miss Marvel, and they were supposed to introduce uh, in the Hawkeye show Kate Bishop, and they were probably going to introduce some of the other characters as well, and they were supposed to end up with the champion. Uh, a, a champion series or a Young Avengers movie. They were supposed to end up with that. But Spider-Man was going to be on it because actually on the Champions, 
uh, Miles Morales is the Spider-Man that's on there. But I had a, I, pretty sure they probably would have swapped Miles Morales for Peter Parker, and he would be on the Champions um, and the Avengers as well. He'll be the first hero to have dual kind of citizenship on two different teams. Now, um, She-Hulk. She-Hulk. Um, I'm interested to see She-Hulk actually. Reason why is because I kind of grew up with some familiarity with the She-Hulk character. So, for you guys don't know, don't know, She-Hulk is actually related to Bruce Banner. Uh, it is, her name is Jennifer Walters, and she is the cousin of Bruce Banner. Some things happen, and she needs a blood transfusion actually from Bruce, and it turns her into a Hulk. Now, she's different actually than the then Bruce, and that while Bruce was this untamable like, rage, she was able to control her strength and keep her mental faculties. Uh, so, you would see her, this big, tall uh, woman that was beautiful, and she had, she had green skin, and she was built like a freaking brick house. Um, and she was an attorney. And she was very comical, but very, like sexual like very <laughs> very um overt when it came comes to um her her sex appeal like she had no problems wearing short skirts and her boobs being out because she was confident she's a confident woman um currently now in the mc in the um in the comic books in the avengers comic book she is an avenger um currently though she is dealing with this whole idea of she can't control her abilities and um, trying to learn to control that gamma rage just because of what happened in Civil War II. Which I'm not going to kind of get into that long story. It's a long story why she got the way she was. Just um, the important part is the fact that she um, has this uncontrollable rage. And so my theory, my prediction is that she, they're going to do one or two things with She-Hawk. Either She-Hawk is going to actually be that on un- that rage monster or it's going to be more comedic and she's going to and she's going to kind of be like a comedic hawk um this like this woman this tall confident woman which i hope they go for because she hawk yes yeah, she hawk does bring comedy but she's just she's this gorgeous woman that was on like she's been on the fantastic four she's been on the female avenger squad basically called a force uh, she's an avenger um she's been like she's a legacy character and i hope that she does have that sex appeal that they cast somebody that's confident in their body and that's basically gorgeous uh, i'm pretty sure they would have to cgi her just because um, they do the same thing with uh, Mark Ruffalo as, as Hawk. I guarantee you she's going to be a lot better than Professor Hawk because, oh, God, they totally neutered Hawk. Um, but we're not going to talk about that. I think she, I'm really looking for I'm looking for it more so to why, of these three shows, honestly, I'm looking more for it to see. I'm looking forward to more to see what they do with She-Hawk because I, I, I believe She-Hawk has the potential to be the star of these Netflix, of these um, Disney Plus shows. Now, um, Moon Knight. And here com- and here's where my problem comes in at with Moon Knight. We really don't know too much about Moon Knight except the fact that he deals with dissociative identity disorder. Uh, he is a hero that uh, he has multiple personalities. He believes that like the uh, moon Egyptian moon god Khonshu, um, I think, I think it's, uh, yeah Khonshu basically imbues him with the power to uh, power to do the things that he do. Think if you were to think you wanted to think wanted to know about Moon Knight, think of him as Marvel's answer to Batman. He does all the stuff Batman does, except he's not. He doesn't have dissociative identity disorder. He has dissociative identity disorder, and Batman does. Um, but some will argue that Batman is crazy too, because who, what same person dresses up like a bat and um, fights crime? 
Now, here's my thing with Moon Knight. Moon Knight technically should be rated R. Um, just want to get this pillow here to prop up my back and everything. Um, Moon Knight should be rated R in my opinion. Uh, the fact that it's not rated R to me is kind of weird. Uh, it's because I think Moon Knight would have done better as a movie than a television show. Now, granted, um, you need to bolster, Marvel needs to bolster their side of things when it comes down to this streaming service because the only things they have is the, uh, is they only have certain shows and yeah, their movies and stuff are going to be on there, but they have not talked about, they have, uh, they haven't yet to kind of really talk about if they're going to bring some of the original, uh, Marvel cartoon, old Marvel cartoons and put them on this show. Uh, on this streaming service. They've yet to say that. Uh, so Marvel's end of this streaming service is going to need some bolstering. Um, I hope Moon Knight is good. And if I was them, even so it's going so it's gonna be PG thirteen, right? If I was them, I would really focus on making those fight scenes type top tier for Moon Knight. So I will go find whoever did the choreography for Daredevil, hire them for this show. Um, because that's really what's going to sell it to Moon Knight fans. People that's fans of Moon Knight, they already upset the fact that he's not getting a movie and that you made this PG-13. So you're going to really have to sell this show. Because um, other than that, which what will happen is if you don't what will happen is people will just not care about this show, uh, and plus we also know it's going to be connected, but we'll see. Uh, but I think that's the only show there I'm not really checking for. Not really checking for Moon Knight. I think for me the ones that of these three shows, uh, the the two female shows, female superhero shows, I think I'm more so looking for. I mean, what do you know? Moon Knight might be a sleep, uh, sleeper hit. Now. What is interesting is these three shows are all in phase four. Uh, so, since we're getting to that, let's look at phase four. Uh, phase four is, th this is phase four as we see it here. Fa um, those three shows will be taking place after Hawkeye. So, what we see, what we got here is starting off with Black Widow. Black Widow being May 1st, um, 2020. Then sometime in fall 2020, we have um, uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Then Eternals in that, uh, November uh, of that same year. Then February, we have Shang-Chi the, and The Legend of Ten Rings. We have WandaVision, which is a Disney Plus show. Uh, as well as Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Then, um, that's in spring 2021. That following year, we have... Uh, that, well, not that following year, I'm sorry. We have that a few months later, because that's spring. A few months later, we have uh, the next movie, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Then we have another streaming show, Loki. You have another streaming show after that taking place is uh, Marvel presents what it, uh, Marvel Studios What If that's a Disney Plus show. Then we have Hawkeye in the fall of 2021, I believe. Uh, let me just make sure. So I believe it's 2021. Yeah, so we have. Yeah, Hawkeye is fall 2021, then Thor, Love and Thunder, uh, November 2021. So, let's talk about this. Because with these next three shows coming up after Hawkeye, we don't have dates for any of these three shows. <sighs> Phase 4 is looking like a total disappointment to me. And here's why. You don't have anything... The and that was and that's the problem with that is kind of when you in retrospect, that's the problem with Endgame and Infinity War. You end on such a high note of Endgame that this is what follows it. 
And I think that's the same problem with Spider-Man Far From Home. Is that you ended on such a high note and then this is what follows it. Same thing with Infinity War. You had Infinity War and then Ant-Man and the Wasp follows that. It's like you it's a hard ass to have anything follow such powerful films. Black Widow and Black Widow. It's gonna be in a is like the people that um the company that uh the John the John Wick people, they're working on a fight scenes for Black Widow. Already that sounds like absolute a fire to me. Uh, but you then have all these other properties coming behind it that's just like Eh, like Falcon and Winter Soldier, for instance, I think uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, uh, well, no, let me correct myself. Black Widow, though, I think Black, no, I think Black Widow does have the guys, the, the John Wick guys on that and Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I think both, I think both of those have the guys from John Wick on there. Um, and Black Widow's interesting because it takes place between Infinity War and Civil War. So... Uh, you got some time to play with there, so that'd be kind of interesting. Uh, but Falcon and Winter Soldier, I mean, no. Uh, Anthony Mackie came out at D23 and said he's not Captain America. But if he comes out with that shield and then those Captain American, his Captain American colors of his Falcon suit uh, from the comic book, I'm going to say you're Captain America. Like, I don't care. I feel like they're trying to play coy with that because... His his character wasn't well received in the comic book, so it makes sense the fact that they're doing they're trying to play coy with that now because they want fans just to be receptive to fans. Eternals, uh, I might do a video. They did some reveal about uh, Eternals and their costumes. I mean, it's not really. I mean, they did a reveal of the costumes and stuff, but let me see a trailer first. That's what I'm kind of interested in. Let me see a trailer. Same thing with Shang Chi. Let me see a trailer. Those fight scenes for Shang Chi, they they're marketing it as uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon meets Marvel. I better see Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon uh, fight type fight scenes in this movie, and they better be fire. Because if they don't, like I'm gonna be kind of upset. Like you market this movie to me as Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon meets Marvel, but Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon is like a corner uh, is a movie that like when you talk about good fight scenes in movies that movie is in the conversation uh for great fight scenes um so and then like wandavision they're marketing wandavision now as kind of be like the dick the dick van dyke show uh and oh and we're going to see our first appearance appearance of monica rambo as photon which i'm looking forward to because photon is freaking broken is a freaking broken character um, but she, like, and that's the thing. A lot of these shows, it's like, what? Even the movie choices. Like, okay, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. They are at, um, Comic-Con. They said that is deep. Um, they're saying that Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness is going to be their first horror. Going to be their first taking a horror genre. Okay. Um, but... Then we get to stuff like Love and Thunder. And it's like, what? Like, is, is, and now we'll see our first look at Jane Foster Thor. I really think, like, is, is, is all of this stuff kind of coming together that, to me, in my opinion, is not really selling Phase 4 to me at all. Uh, and then you got these three shows kind of coming up behind Hawkeye. And it's like, so far to me and my oh and um what if it has 23 episodes and they showed a little bit of animation now I, from my understanding of people that's there and in my like, twitter clips it appears to me that like the animation does look solid but i then again like i said i don't really trust it because like marvel's anima animated i don't know if anybody any of you guys watch the Avengers or the Incredible Hulk and Agents of Smash or the Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy animated shows that they'll be on Disney XD, but their animation a lot of times, sometimes is not the greatest. So to me, what we're kind of, what I'm kind of seeing is just like, I'm not really seeing anything that's selling me on phase four. There's nothing here that's making me say, wow, 
this looks like this is going to be an awesome start to something new. It doesn't, like, you got a movie, you starting off phase four with a movie that should have happened phases ago. And you're ending phase four, arguably, on one of the three Disney um, Plus streaming shows. Either um, She-Hulk, Moon Knight, or Miss Marvel. You're ending on one of those three. And it's just like, that's such a lackluster ending. I get that you're trying to introduce new characters, but... You you gonna have to bring some fire, like because you gonna have to bring some fire because I feel like this is not it. This this is not it at all. Uh, but with those new yet again with those new shows, um, back to those new shows. I, I mean, like I said, two of the three I'm excited for. The other one we shall see. Uh, but I want to see some. I want to start seeing some trailers. Hopefully, we can start seeing trailers soon, and we can see what some of this stuff looks like, uh, because it's better, you know, we can kind of judge it based off the appearance of when we can start getting trailers and stuff. We'll be able to uh, judge it based off that. So, uh, with that being said, I'm going to wrap this up here. Uh, if you guys, tell me guys what you got, what you think down below in the comment section. Did you like, do you, do you think these three uh, shows are going to be any good? What about Phase 4? What are your thoughts on Phase 4? Um, do you Have you heard about Miss Marvel? If you're a Miss Marvel, She-Hulk, or Moon Knight fan, are you looking, is the, are you looking, are you checking for these shows or not? Um, if you guys, it, uh, are you guys kind of excited for these Disney Plus shows? Tell me what you guys think. Um, if you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share this to every, share this to all your friends and comic book, comic book fans alike. Um, and with that being said, I will see you when I see you. Peace.